From making insane reads to calling insane bluffs, this guy has earned the name Kid Psychic with true stripes. And these are Daniel Negreanu's top reads that are just insane and will blow your mind. And first up, we got the final table game of the PGT Last Chance event number one. We're staring down the barrel of a showdown between two heavyweights of the poker world, Ace King versus Queens. Bonomo's got Daniel covered just barely, but enough to put Daniel on the line. Man, whoever clinches this is going to skyrocket to the top of everyone's list of favorites to snatch the win. And if Bonomo bites the dust here, he's going to be scraping up what's left of his chips with a teaspoon. The flop comes King Jack 5. Daniel got the guts, he nails top pair with the top kicker, the turn card flips, and bam, it's the four of hearts. Now Bonomo's sweating bullets, hunting for one of those last two queens lurking in the deck. There is a whopping three million chips sitting right in the middle. Can Bonomo snag it? No, he can't. The river comes three of hearts. Daniel swoops in and scores a mega double up. Talk about a game changer. This pot, it's like Mount Everest, absolutely massive. Man, let me tell you, going up against Daniel is like diving into a shark tank with a hangover. Dude's got skills for days. He's playing against three pros and a cabbie, no sweat for him. So here we are again. Mike Sexton got the King Kong and raises 22 grand like he's daring everyone else to blink. But Daniel is always up for a challenge. He sees those queens and deuces and thinks, yeah, why not? And calls like it's Tuesday. This is a real showdown. And if you know who Mike Sexton is, then you would understand what I mean. He was a legend with over 5 million in total WSOP tournament winnings. And he was even a commentator in so many games. But let's get back to the table because we have many more plays that Daniel faces off against legends. Here, the flop comes five, seven, six, all different suits. Sexton's kings still standing tall. Daniel, cool as a cucumber, he checks, just feeling out the vibe. Then out of nowhere, Sexton decides to play it cool. Doesn't flex his kings, just checks back. Daniel's eyebrows raise a bit, smelling something in the air. Could this be his moment to shine? So when that turn card drops, Daniel's like, hey, there's a glimmer of hope. Because bam, he pairs his card and suddenly feels like he's got some magic hands. With a solid 30,000 chips riding on this, Daniel takes a swing at the pot, hoping to grab a bit of control and suss out Sexton's hands. Now Sexton, he's playing it cool, making a call like he's trying to keep Daniel on his toes, not giving away the strength of his hand, and man, the tension's real. Both dudes are waiting eagerly for that river card, cause it's make or break time. But then, boom, the river shows up with another five, and Sexton's sitting there with kings up thinking, this is my moment. So he goes big, dropping a whopping 50,000 on the table into a pot of 110,000, trying to milk every last drop of value from his killer hand. And you can bet the pressure's on Daniel. And what's wild, Daniel knows he's toast, but he just wants to double check. You know, it's nuts. Like who does that? You might have like kings, I guess. It's crazy. <laughs> he might. Two kings? That is unearthly. Daniel might be an alien. <laughs> Time and time again, we hear him call out his opponent's cards. He might have x-ray vision. I just want to see him. Oh, he was going to pay for the information and make the call. How scary is this guy? You have kings? How scary is this, really? Yeah, I thought that's the only hand out you could have was two kings. Huh. At least I called it right. What is that a dab in there now? I didn't have any clue what you had. He's just all about playing the game, and these types of things happen a lot when Daniel's playing. But like we promised, let me show you another play where Daniel faces off another top player, Smilkovic, a Brackletot winner, and High Earner. And here they are facing once again the last game of this tournament. Daniel has got Queen 8 off suit. Smilkovic decides to raise with a 500k bet with 4 deuce off suit, and Daniel tosses in a call, and bam, we're off to the flop with more than a million in the pot. Flop comes up King 9 4 2 hearts. Smiljakovic is holding onto his bottom pair and he checks, and Negranu also decides to check back. Then, boom! Queen hits on the turn, swinging Daniel Negranu's right back into the lead with a sweet pair of queens. Smilkovic and Daniel both decide to check once more. The river, another king, Negranu's sitting pretty with the best hand, just have to make sure he doesn't fold now. We're talking about a monster pot up for grabs, folks. Seven figures on the line. 
and Daniel decides it's time to go for some value, slapping down a bet of 450k. That's about 40% of the pot, and Smilovic doesn't hesitate to call. But that was a mistake because, just like that, Daniel Negranu snags the chip lead and goes on to win the entire tournament after a few more plays. So he's got a queen 10 offsuit and he's itching to shake things up. Daniel's like, let's amp this party up and throws down a raise to 3000. But then out of nowhere, Ryan McLean steps in repping pocket aces. The dude's from Edmonton, just like Daniel, and he's not here to mess around. He slams a re-raise on the table, bumping it up to 9000 from the small blind. Daniel's like, hmm, okay, let's dance. He decides to go along with it and calls. Then boom, the flop hits, 5-4 queen. Daniel's sitting pretty with the top pair and McLean. He's got that stone cold poker face going on saying more with his silence than words ever could. And just like that, Daniel's instincts kick into overdrive. It's like he's plugged into some kind of psychic hotline or something. You know what I think he's got? Aces. That is uncanny. <laughs> I think he's got two aces. What do you do if you're McLean? No. Well, I'm not even sure McLean has aces, and, and we can see his cards. McLean, a little more than half the pot. That's 12,000 with his aces. <laughs> well, if Daniel is so sure he has aces, why did he reach for chips? Ace. Yeah, he made the call. You would think a read like is so rare, right? But this is Negranu, and I can't believe it too, but this guy has won so many gameplays, like, which we will show you. But the question is, does he win now? I mean, we have seen earlier doing the same thing and also losing to Sexton. And McLean doing what he does best, drops a bombshell bet, tossing in over half the pot with his killer aces, splashing 12,000 chips into the mix. And guess what? Despite Daniel having a hint of what's cooking, he still throws his chips into the pot, making the call. But wait! Hold on to your hats, folks. The turn flips a deuce onto the table. Daniel's still hanging in there, but he decides to play it cool this time, going for a check. And what do you know, his jabbering seems to have thrown McLean off his game because now McLean's suddenly on the defensive, checking back, handing Daniel a lifeline with a free card. Now brace yourselves for the grand finale. The river pulls out a five, sealing the deal for McLean with those beastly aces of his. So what does Daniel do with a pot size of 45,000? He folds and loses. He just loses that pot, even though he knew exactly what McLean had. He's like some kind of mind reader, knows your cards before you do. It's like he's from another planet or something. Playing against him feels like trying to outsmart a genius. Seriously, what's the move when you're up against that level of poker wizardry? I don't know, nor does this guy, Greg Fosselman Raymer. At the 2006 National Heads Up Poker Championship, Daniel Negranu and Raymer were at it again. Raymer's holding a 10-5 suited and decides to crank up the heat with a hefty raise to 3,600. Daniel, rocking jack seven of hearts, doesn't want to back down. He calls. Then, bam! Negranu lands a solid pair on the flop and they both hit the brakes, opting for a check on the turn, which drops an eight of hearts, keeping Negranu in the lead. But he's playing it cool, letting Raymer make the first move. Raymer, bold as ever, throws down a bluff worth 5,000. Negranu ain't flinching, he calls quicker than lightning. Now buckle up, cause here comes the twist. The river rolls out a brick, but it's like nothing's changed. So Raymer's sweating bullets now, but he ain't about to chicken out. And Negranu? He's been reading Raymer like an open book and feeling himself after that call. Raymer goes all in, tossing his chips like confetti. Talk about putting it all on the line. With just a measly 10-5 suited, Raymer straight up bluffing like a madman. Negranu's staring him down with second pair, but he's trusting his gut over all the noise. It's like watching a high stakes movie, and these dudes are the stars. With my gut, this could be really stupid. I call. Wow. You call, you win, buddy. How do you call that? Great call. Negranu's poker instincts are off the charts, man. He totally nails the call, leaving Raymer speechless with his empty hand revealed. This is why you don't mess with him, and that's the moment Raymer bites the dust in the tournament. And here Negranu got 10, six suited, sitting comfy, and he's like, let's shake things up, folks. Tosses in a cool grand like it's pocket change. Berkey's not about to let that slide though with his queen 10 offsuit from the small blind. And hey, even Dan Smith's like, why not? I'm in with his 8-3 suited. Game's on fire already. Then the flop drops like a bomb. Eight deuce nine, rainbow. 
Berkey and Smith play a chill, both giving it a pass. But Negranu's not one to play it safe. No, sir! He throws down $2,200. Negranu's eyeing that gut shot straight draw, feeling the adrenaline pumping. But Berkey's like, hold my beer, and raises the roof. Smith just goes folding his cards and leaving the heavyweights to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Now Negranu's checks and gets that flush draw with a five of spades on the turn. Game changer. Berkey ain't one to back down. He goes rampage, dropping a hefty $10,000 into the pot. Negranu senses trouble brewing, but decides to roll with it, crossing his fingers for either a flush or a bluff from Berkey. The tension's thick as we reach the river, and then, boom, out pops an ace of hearts, sealing the deal for Berkey, you think. You have to hand it to Berkey. His skills are no joke. But against Negranu, that's like bringing a water pistol to a firefight. This isn't even his first rodeo. He has pulled off insane clutch moves before. Will he do it again? There are more that I will show you after this one, but what can he do now? Berkey is standing his ground. Daniel nails it, boldly throwing down bets and banking on Berkey Bam. Just when you're about to write him off, he flips the script and snags the victory. Total boss move right there. Berkey has just queen high now. Can't imagine his hand is good, though it is. Will he fire this crucial third barrel and collect the spoils, or will he wave the white flag? He chooses the latter, and now Daniel must bet. And he very confidently Asks for all of it. Oh, I have a spade that bad. He didn't have a spade. Good thing I did. <laughs> At least one. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely had the best hand there. Daniel nails it, boldly throwing down bets and banking on his bluff. Bam! Just when you're about to write him off, he flips the script and snags the victory. Total boss move right there. Man, let me tell you, at this point, pros are afraid of him. So, Kristen Foxen steps up to the plate this time, ready to throw down in some serious high-stakes poker action at the PGT kickoff series. She is a Canadian professional poker player who has made history by becoming the first female player ever to win four World Series of Poker Gold bracelets. In the 2023 WSOP Online Dollar 888 Buy-In No Limit Hold'em Crazy 8S event, she secured a record-setting victory and a top payout of $92,142. With more than $7.1 million in recorded tournament earnings, she ranks as the second highest earning female player in history. And guess what? Daniels dealt a pretty lousy hand to begin with. Tough luck, right? But hold up, the flop hits the table and bam, it's 993. Foxen ain't hesitating, she throws down 80 grand. But Negranu has managed to pair his threes, so instead of just calling like the rest of us chumps, he drops a bomb with a bet of 180 grand. But then, out of the blue, Foxen throws him a curveball with a raise. And what's Negranu's move? He throws down the cash. Now, Negranu's got the upper hand, and they're both on edge for the next card. It's a king. Nothing changes, but Foxen ain't backing down. She drops 175k. Negranus must be thinking, man, I'm hanging on by a thread with just a pair of threes. Foxen's hand? It could be anything from thin air to a big hand, but her decision not to raise earlier smells fishy. And to top it off, Daniel gets screwed over on the river. It's game over for him with just a measly pair of threes. If Foxen's holding anything better, she's taking this pot. And guess what? She's got the winning hand. But hey, Daniel's not losing his cool. He's not about to let his emotions call the shots. No. He's all about that strategic play, so he plays it smooth and checks to Foxen, but she hits him with a bet that's more than half his stack. What's Negranu's move? He goes all in. All in. Fold. Foxen folds. Negranu's out here pulling off some insane moves. Even Foxen's giving him props. I mean, what can you say? The guy's a bluffing mastermind, reading minds like some kind of poker psychic. How else can you explain this when Trudeau ain't holding back, slapping down 300k on the table, gripping them two eights like his life depends on it? And most of them fold like a cheap suit, leaving Trudeau staring down the barrel with his eights against Negranu's big shots. Talk about a nail biter. 
If Trudeau pulls this off, he's back in the game with over 725k in his pocket. But it's no walk in the park. He is praying to the poker gods for an eight to show up, but luck ain't on Trudeau's side as the turn comes up empty. Will he get lucky this time? Nope, nada. Trudeau's luck runs dry and he's out of there, giving Daniel a descent size pot. The thing that preplexes me is how is he doing this? People go all in and he just gets another opportunity to kick them out of the game. Do you have any idea? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and if you like to see another video like this, check out our channel and I will see you there.